How does a game about alien bugs beat Call of Duty? And how do 100 developers beat 3000? This should be impossible, like Nicki Minaj being in a Call of Duty game. In this video, we're going to explore why Helldivers 2's shocking success is more than just a win for COD players. It could be a return to what game development used to be. So let's get right into how this masterpiece did the impossible to beat Call of Duty and why it's making everyone's nipples hard. Hit that like button, subscribe if you love democracy. The night and day difference between these two games, Helldivers 2 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, all goes back to the developers. Listen again to me closely. 100 developers versus 3,000 developers. You would think the smaller team doesn't stand a chance, but nope. The devs at Arrowhead Games actually listen to the community. They said they will never add PvP because they want to keep the toxicity that comes with it away. Doesn't it feel awesome that developers actually care about the quality of your playing experience? It's a strange feeling to experience this after the year we had of Modern Warfare 2 2022 developed by Infinity Ward. Everything fell on deaf ears that year, and the community was a mess. One of the biggest criticisms against Call of Duty is releasing games yearly. This especially rang true with MW3, as it clearly was intended to be DLC to MW2 2022. But Activision just couldn't resist slapping that $70 price tag on a game that clearly needed way more time to develop. It's a scam. But Arrowhead Game Studios, the small developer team of Helldivers 2, made Helldivers 2 the right way. They worked on the game for 7 years before releasing it, versus COD working on MW3 for barely over a year. Inexcusable. But that's just the irritating reality of COD's business model. Release a game unfinished and drip feed content to your consumers year after year. Sadly, it works for many COD suckers. Recently, however, more and more players have been waking up to this in the COD community and ditching the franchise. And guess where everyone is ending up? Fighting for democracy. The players truly do appreciate the passion behind Helldivers 2. I know the whole liberty and freedom thing is kind of a meme, but you literally feel liberated after going from Modern Warfare 3 to Helldivers 2. You're free from the misery of skill-based matchmaking and engagement-optimized matchmaking. And the concept of immersion in modern Call of Duty? Non-existent. Oh, did you expect a military shooter to not have Nicki Minaj? You, sir, are now a dumbass. I just miss when no one had a choice for their operator skins. It was like, wanna be a sniper? Okay, you'll have a ghillie suit. Default skins made Call of Duty immersive because it fit the theme of the game. You didn't have legit furries running around the map, and it eliminated the garbage concept of pay to win. Because if you didn't know, when you buy skins in Modern Warfare 3, the game gives you an unfair advantage over someone who has not bought a skin. So everyone line up for the next farm animal. Immersive, right? With that being said, let me ask you this. Can you remember the last time you played a live service game and it wasn't poisoned by a battle pass? Feels weird to think about, right? And it's sad to say it's been that long since a Call of Duty game didn't have it. And let's face it, it's no coincidence COD went downhill ever since. Why do I say that? Well, why do you think, Stanley? The battle pass killed progression in Call of Duty. Just look at Modern Warfare 3 2023. What's the point in even grinding? Literally the only reason to play is to unlock tokens. Tokens COD players wish they could use to refund their purchase of MW3. Instead, we use tokens to unlock new weapons that are going to get nerfed by next season. We also use tokens to unlock cosmetics and skins. The best ones being locked behind a paywall anyway. And by best, I really mean you need to be evaluated if you actually bought this. Remember the old prestige system Call of Duty used to have? That's when progression existed, not depression. This classic prestige system enabled a simplistic way to level up and gave meaning to the multiplayer grind. It's pretty sad when Call of Duty 4, a game that released in 2007, does it better than the same franchise over a decade later. That's why I enlisted in the Helldivers. In Helldivers 2, they did the battle pass way better than Call of Duty. And you know what the crazy part is? It's not even really a battle pass. The war bond encourages you to play more to unlock more, not pay more. It is so refreshing to play a live service game and actually have something to progress towards, other than a mental breakdown. Think about it. What is the biggest difference between Helldivers 2 and Call of Duty? Look here at the Call of Duty store, try without gagging. Now look at the Helldivers 2 store. What do you notice? I don't know about you, but all I can think of is one word. And it starts with an M. You have three seconds to guess the word before I blow these bugs up. Microtransactions. Microtransactions are a thorn in a COD player's ass. In Bundle Warfare 3, you literally cannot avoid any of these skins or cosmetics. Whether it's Nicki Minaj or a freaking duck, you better get used to it, because they're not going anywhere. Because the same people who are probably commenting right now, Don't like it, don't play, not my fault you're broke, are the same people buying these stupid ass bundles and loading up on COD points. But Helldivers 2 on the other hand, has none of this garbage. 
It doesn't shove any FOMO driven bundles in your face, which is so refreshing to experience for once. And here's the craziest part. The only purchases you can make in Helldivers 2 are for in-game currency, and the most expensive pack as I said is only $20. But Arrowhead enables Helldivers players to just skip through the grind and buy as many credits as you want to unlock the next Warbond. However, you don't have to if you'd rather play the game organically and progress just by simply playing and enjoying the game. It's such a simple yet consumer friendly concept. Call of Duty on the other hand uses a consumer predatory concept and that is genuinely sickening. Let me give you a prime example. There was a huge controversy going on in Modern Warfare 3 over what you say? A bundle. But not just any bundle, the most expensive bundle in COD history. How much did it cost? 3400 COD points, which would potentially cost you $40. Guess what else costs $40? Yep. Call of Duty literally just tried selling a cringe ass bundle with the same price tag as a potential 2024 game of the year. Is that not insane to you? It's criminal. We're looking at you Activision, get a clue. Real quick, tell me if this looks familiar. That is the rigged Call of Duty experience. Want to know the funniest part in all this? The biggest complaint I've heard from COD players about Helldivers 2 is it gets boring because you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And I'm just sitting there like, wow, that sounds awful familiar. It's not like that sums up the entire COD experience. That is what you call a coping COD sucker. Aside from the dumbass hypocrites though, Modern Warfare 3 lacks this one secret ingredient. It's the one ingredient that a game needs in order for it to be, you know, good. It's that F word, fun. Let's just say it flat out, Helldivers 2 is amazingly fun, and Call of Duty is about as fun as a night after eating Taco Bell. Could I not say Call of Duty is just mind numbing, pointing and shooting, game after game? The truth is, you could say it about any game, so that's just a dumb argument. But Helldivers 2's gameplay is genuinely engaging, which makes the repetition of landing on a planet, shooting bugs, and extracting an addictive experience. For anyone out there who has played PS2, this game reminds me of those days. I remember just playing offline on Star Wars Battlefront 2 against bots and having a blast for hours on end. I always enjoyed those games where there was constant chaos and endless fun. Those are the good times Helldivers 2 reminds me of, and I think that's why everyone loves to play this game. Unlike Modern Warfare 3, when you're not even in control of the game. <coughs> it's rigged. And yes, Call of Duty is a PvP first person shooter, while Helldivers 2 is a PvE co-op third person shooter but you cannot deny how much different you feel when you play these two games. If you play the old Call of Duties, one of the aspects of those classic games that is dearly missed is the social aspect of the game. When lobbies stayed together, you know, when everyone had mics in the lobby and talked a whole lot of smack. Comment if you remember those days. Unlike today in MW3, when lobbies disband and you're likely to get banned by AI voice chat moderation. Here's the awesome part of those old COD lobbies though. Not every lobby was toxic. Instead, you had the potential to meet some really cool people. If you had a good time playing together, that dude unexpectedly could turn out to be a lifelong friend. I've personally met a bunch of cool people as well, who I played COD with for years and still to this day. And that's the same feeling I get when I play Helldivers 2. Other than the band spamming, the Helldivers community reminds me of the old days of the Xbox 360 and PS3 voice chat. I love how the game promotes the social aspect of games and keeps lobbies together so that you can make new friends and enjoy the game together. This game is going to create memories. At a time when Call of Duty is prioritizing the profit over player enjoyment, Helldivers 2 serves as a big FU and COD players are loving it. Call of Duty is losing thousands of players to Helldivers 2 and is getting dominated by it in the Steam charts. Helldivers 2 literally outsold Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 for the month of February. For a game made by 100 developers, it's pretty insane they took down the Goliath that is Call of Duty. It's also pretty insane that you may not have liked the video and subscribed to the one yet. It's free and actually worth your time, unlike the COD Battle Pass. So how did 100 developers beat 3000? Arrowhead Game Studios develops their sequel to Helldivers in 7 years, a game no one believed would see much traction, not even the developers. But man, the time and effort put into developing this game would end up paying off big time. After Pal World had just taken the gaming industry by storm, it was time for another indie developer team to take the industry by notice, this time even bigger. And on February 8th, 2024, that's exactly what happened. Helldivers 2 released, and it seems like overnight the game was everywhere. It was hard to ignore the overwhelmingly positive reviews it was receiving. As Helldivers 2 was starting to dominate the gaming universe, comparisons to Call of Duty became inevitable. 
Word got around that Helldivers 2 had surpassed Call of Duty on PlayStation Network, even Fortnite. That is insane! For a game made by a small team of 100 developers versus Call of Duty, who has 3,000 developers and multiple teams working on their garbage games, the game got so big that Arrowhead Games had to limit its server capacity to 450,000 players because everyone wanted to get in on the action, and the servers could not handle it. Meanwhile, COD players are like, GET ME! The Call of Duty servers are about as empty as the COD players' wallets and brains. Helldivers 2 is dominating Call of Duty in the Steam charts as well, consistently ranking in the top 10, which is really sad considering Call of Duty's player count is counted across Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 2, and Warzone. Embarrassing. One thing that was glaring to me though was the wave of COD players moving over to Helldivers 2. Comment if you're one of these players. But I'd be lying if I told you I didn't notice the horde of comments from COD players I received about Helldivers 2 urging me to give it a shot. So yeah, it caused me to say, let's dive right into this, pun intended. Helldivers 2 draws comparison to and inspiration from multiple games like Gears of War, Deep Rock Galactic, and Warhammer. But let me tell you right now, it would be criminal to downplay the creative vision Arrowhead Games had for Helldivers 2. Right from the jump, I was all in on democracy. The opening intro scene assured me that this was going to be an immersive experience. The satire and meme culture are what separates Helldivers 2 more than any other game I've played. The serious and epic tone combined with the satirical and humorous tone make the perfect blend. Considering we live in an era of meme culture, it makes the tone even more perfect. And that is catchy, I swear, it's gotten every player to speak the words democracy, freedom, and liberty at least once a day. But the experience of Helldivers 2 in its entirety is the pinnacle of immersion. One thing I find really cool is when you're in the spaceship, you can look down on the planet at other players fighting in real time. It genuinely makes you feel a part of the environment. But the coolest part? Launching into battle with the boys. Or should I say descending to a planet from outer space at a rate faster than a cod sucker spends money on a new bundle. But the immersive experience does not stop at the epic descent. It really begins on a battlefield. As a longtime Call of Duty fan, I never thought in my wildest dreams I'd enjoy a co-op third-person shooter about shooting bugs. But let me tell you, the chaos is unmatched. In the soulless era of modern gaming, Helldivers 2 is so damn fun. I appreciate how tension builds when you draw attention to the bugs, and the music picks up intensity as they begin swarming you and your boys. It causes this constant feeling of panic and fight or flight, and I think it's what engages you fully into the game. You also can fight robots in different planets, and it oddly feels like an entirely new experience. I don't know why, but going from fighting bugs to robots feels like going from a fun panic to legitimate fear. The atmosphere totally changes to a more eerie feeling. It's like, damn, I feel like I'm fighting the Call of Duty developers, and there's probably about 3,000 of them too. But that just speaks to how immersive Helldivers 2 truly is, and if you want to make it even more interesting, you can increase the difficulty, but don't let your head get too big. If you don't have strong enough stratagem, you will get wrecked. Which is why I say, thanks Sweet Liberty for progression. The variety of currencies encourages you to play more to unlock more. Imagine that. Stratagem are unlocked by leveling up and acquiring requisition slips, which require you to complete missions. Metals enable you to progress through the war bond and unlock new weapons and armor. Samples, which are only found on the planet, enable you to upgrade your character through ship modules. This could include decreasing the stratagem cooldown and the deployment time, so you get the point. Progression is rewarding, but super credits tell an even bigger story. The most expensive pack is only $20 for 2100 super credits, and you can unlock both of the premium war bonds with it. I know, crazy concept. Rather than forcing your players to pay a disgusting amount of money for cosmetics, you give them the option to play for them to earn them. Pay to win is out the door in Helldivers 2, but why is this such a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because Helldivers 2 is representing a shift in game development. A shift in which developers care more about making players happy than scamming their players, like in Modern Warfare 3. As passionate fans, we deserve the best possible game that is actually worth the money spent, and Helldivers 2 is a beautiful example of what happens when developers and publishers do right by their fans. You get the praise and loyalty you deserve. I still remember the first time I picked up this game, and it felt like I was in a trance. I was like, wow, a live service game that doesn't want to make me punch myself in the nose? The saddest part about this is it goes to show how much Call of Duty has lowered people's standards. It's gross how they remain best sellers based on their name alone. COD relies on marketing their big name, validated only by the greatness of their past, to sell their broken games. That's what's most impressive about Helldivers 2 though. 
No one even knew Helldivers 1 existed, but Arrowhead games have outdone themselves. Think about a game you picked up and instantly fell in love with. For me personally, that was Helldivers 2. And I'm sure you could relate to this one, but it could be any game for you. When I first played Helldivers 2, it caused me to utter words that I never say while playing Call of Duty. I'm having fun. So ask yourself again, how did Arrowhead Game Studios, the small indie developer team, outperform Activision's 3,000 incompetent developers? It's all because Arrowhead Games put the players over the profit. They somehow realized the crazy concept, wow, Maybe the reason AAA games like Call of Duty are failing is because the games are just dog shit. Let's genuinely try our best to make a good game and see what happens. And what do you know? They create a masterpiece and put COD to shame. Think about how amazing this is for the future of game development. Helldivers 2 is causing a shift of small indie studios like Arrowhead whose main priority is to make a good game. That's why the success of Helldivers 2 is so huge thanks to the devs. And this may force Call of Duty's hand one day to once again actually work on their games and not continue to put out soulless cash grabs like MW3. It may be the return of a new golden era where games are made with passion and creativity rather than greed and laziness. If you haven't given Helldivers 2 a chance yet, I highly recommend. I promise your $40 will be worth it over that goofy ass COD bundle. But to truly understand how incredible it is that Helldivers 2 beat Call of Duty, watch this video on why Modern Warfare 3 is so damn hated. Thanks for tuning in everyone. I am a sentinel. Tisman 1. Facing off against monsters who haven't got a democratic bone in their body, if they even have bones.